everybody and welcome to the stream. Tonight we're going to be looking at some refactoring. My name is Christian, I'm the author of the book Five Lines of Code and I've been looking so much forward to this stream. It's going to be super fun. Um, we're going to be going through a famous refactoring kata uh, online that I've done before but it's uh, more than a year ago so I've forgotten pretty much how it looks so you'll be seeing pretty much my impressions as they were the first time I saw the refactoring kata. So, um, the Gilded Rose Refactoring Kata, uh, I know of it from uh, Emily Brahi here. And uh, there is a Terry Hughes who apparently did it first. Uh, but I think this has the most variations. So the only thing I've done so far is just to check out this repository and load the Java version up in IntelliJ. And I'm no expert in IntelliJ or in editors or anything like that. Uh, so feel free to correct me if I'm doing something in a cumbersome way or not. Um, I'm just uh, looking at the refactoring mostly. Okay, let's get into it. The Gilded Rose refactoring kata has, uh, it's, it has some testing framework set up uh, right from the start, which is nice. So you can get right into it if you wanna do a lot of testing. It also has this file, which is really the crux of the whole program. Can I make everything a little bit smaller so we can see more? something like this. It has this file, the Gilded Rose. Let me know if it, if the text is too small. I'll try to enlarge it somehow. Um, yeah, and in the Gilded Rose thing, we have some items and then we have this update quality. And that's really what the Gilded Rose program is doing. It's calculating the quality of items that are for sale in this kind of um, this store called the Gilded Rose, I think. That's the that's the meta around it. And this code is not written in a particularly inviting way. It has some loops, it has loads of if statements and they're nested really deeply. It also has this item class, which is very, very simple. It just has fields and then it has a constructor for setting the fields and then it has a two string method. In the original rules of the, the refactoring kata, this one, you're not supposed to modify this file at all, um, pretending that there is a colleague who's, uh, um, who's very precious about this code. So we're not supposed to touch that. I'm not sure if we're gonna keep that requirement here because it, I think it gets a little more fun if we can mess around with all of these things too. Um, so we'll see how, uh, how that goes. Uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, it's uh, we could start reading this code from the top and just start going down. I think that's going to be a lot to keep in our heads while doing it. So instead, I actually like to just start by breaking up um, sort of this long method. It's way too long. So the first thing I would usually do is I would try to figure out, okay, from the bottom of the method, how, how do we read it backwards, uh, so to speak? The first thing I notice is that we have one big if chunk here at the end which seems to suggest that this ties together. Another thing that's interesting here is there are actually blank lines in some of the places here, which also suggests that the programmer who put it there originally meant that this is a separate part from this and these are both separate parts from whatever that whole thing is up there. So what we could do is just start by taking this code and extracting it to a method. Uh, I expect there should be some way to do this with the editor directly. Extract method, control alt M. I'll try to remember that. Uh, oh, and before we do it, let's just quickly scan over it. It seems to handle whenever something's sell in date is uh, below zero, or we could call it expired, I'm guessing. So this we could extract to something called handle expired. Let's see how that works. Good, so now we already have some name for this thing. It takes an int, what will this int? Oh, that's the index of the item that it's actually doing. Instead of doing the item, I think actually we're gonna want to extract this item uh, out of here. So can we just select this thing and say extract local? I would expect something like that. Introduce variable, replace all of the 13 occurrences in here. So now we take, we have an item here and we can actually just take the item instead of the integer. So when we have a local like this, we can just sort of extract it out like this, which I think is a little bit nicer. So it handled expi uh, expired this item. 
Now I'm realizing now that this actually starts with an if, so it handles the things if they're expired. So I think I'll just rename this. Oops, that did something different. What is renaming them? And that would be Shift F6. That is hard for me to remember. Handle if expired, because then inside of it, this code here is actually what's handling things that are definitely expired. So we could extract that and express that in a method too. Handle expired. Like this. Okay, so this is a little bit different because it has, we have an if else, it's harder to sort of break apart. So maybe we should leave that for a little bit and then continue up here looking at what this is. This here seems to be decreasing the expiry date. So whereas all of this code down here was very concerned with the sell-in, this is also concerned with the sell-in. So I'm thinking actually, I disagree with this line break. I think these go together because I think this has to do with the updating of the sell-in field. So we can extract that and say update sell in. Something like this. That also happens to want to take the I, and I, I dislike that again. So if we take this and extract it to a variable. What about the failing test? Yeah, we can fix that if, uh, if that's something that bothers people. Like this, we have the item extracted out. Uh, we can talk about testing actually, that probably would be an appropriate place to start when we're doing refactoring. Okay, now we have something that's in a stable state. So testing, um, we have this failing test here and oops here, and it's just a, a fix me thing, right? We could just put in foo and it, it, would, be, it would be fixed, I expect, because it's just looking at the thing after it's updated the thing, it shouldn't change its name. So now we have fixed the test. Um, but so this, this test is not really that useful. It doesn't really test anything interesting. Um, what we could do is start going through what sort of way, paths we could go through in here to get some test coverage. Um, and we would need, I'm guessing around 11 tests or something to get through a lot of the ifs because they're so deeply nested. We need to really take care. Maybe we need actually 16 test cases or something to hit all of these cases. Um, but in in keeping with a style I like, where we try to do as, as close to, more, let's say, how industry code often ends up looking, there often, there isn't a lot of test coverage from the beginning and sometimes you just you can do some simple refactorings without uh, messing things up, especially because so far I've pretty much only been having the, the IntelliJ do all of the refactoring, which, which sort of makes me confident that we're not breaking anything. Of course, the only way to know would be to, uh, to, to test it and see if it still works. But um, yeah, or write, so we could write a lot of test cases for that. We could also just try to write one test case that would be really specific. I just find that testing for a stream takes a while and it's not necessarily the most interesting thing, unless that's what people want to see, then of course we'll do it. So it's really, it's up to you is what I'm trying to say. We can definitely do testing if that's something people would like to see. I hope that answered your questions. At least now the test isn't failing anymore. So the huge red sign is gone from the screen. Let's continue for a little bit. So we have like a big, huge if here. And like right, it starts all the way up here actually and spans all of this. We can already sort of see what it has to do with because all of this mentions the quality thing a lot. So, I mean, I think we can just quickly without reading it into detail, we can extract it quickly as something that uh, handles the quality. Maybe we can even say update the quality. It seemed to change it in some places. Refactoring it out, sure. It again wanted to give the index, which 
is understandable, but we don't want that. We want this here to be extracted as a variable. All of the 18 occurrences. This way we can take this, put it up here, take this thing and grab it out of there and put it in here. You also notice something else um, that sort of helps me at least gain confidence that, uh, that I, so that I don't need tests is all of the changes I'm making is provoking an error that I can only fix really in a way that um, is correct. Like there's no way to resolve this error short of writing like null or something uh, weird that would not le lend itself to having only the correct solution working. Now these two go pretty much together. Uh, so we have something that updates the quality and something that updates the sell-in. That seems reasonable. This is much easier to get like a quick bearing of now. Oh, this is actually called update quality, which makes me feel like um, that's not the best name for this. Of course, this one is public, so we can't actually um, change it, right? It's, it's, um, it's outside of the scope for refactoring to change anything that uh, is, is we don't have access to. So we could imagine someone is actually using this class somewhere else that we don't know. And if we change the name of this one now, then their code will break. And we're not allowed to break anybody else's code. We're actually not allowed to break any code while refactoring.